What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we bring you reviews, news, and clues to what's going on in the superhero genre. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we got to talk about this last episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then we'll get into sub- sub- subsequent announcements that was made immediately after that. Um, then we'll get into some secret invasion news. Uh, Russell Sc- Russell Crowe spilled the beans, but you know, it's Russell Crowe. He can say whatever he wants, right? They're not going to say nothing to him. Uh, how good does it sound for Marvel to say the Academy Award winning director, Chloe Zhao, doing the Eternals now? That's what you're going to see all over the place. Um, and then we'll get a little bit into the HBO Max subscriber numbers that were released last week um, that weren't very good. But Brian, you have some thoughts that you would like to talk about um, that that announcement. Um, but let's get into Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode six, the final episode of the season, perhaps just for the season. We might get subsequent season. Brian, I got to say, man. I was expecting a lot more from this. And it seems to me like the elements were there, but the writing wasn't able to put it together right. Or it felt like it needed a little bit more. Because this episode was shorter than the previous one, right? So, tell me your thoughts on the final episode, and then we'll get into certain things regarding the power broker and and some other things that that came up on the show. What did you think of episode six? Well, look, we we praise Marvel when we feel it's warranted, which is a lot of the time. We need to criticize Marvel when we feel it's warranted. And I think we're two shows into the Disney Plus era of the MCU. We have a budding problem. Yeah. These shows have fit, both finished flat. The, the best episodes in these shows have been a middle episode and usually that second to last episode. Great setup. But I think they actually suffered from the same fundamental issue, which is something we've talked about. We've talked about Marvel needing and wanting to get away from the formula that worked for the 22 films. And I think in both of these finales, they retreated too far into what we've already seen before. And it almost felt like we were checking boxes at points along the way here. And I thought it was actually even more obvious in this finale than it was in the WandaVision finale. And I thought it was pretty obvious in the WandaVision finale. So I'm with you. If if you asked me how to describe the finale, given the momentum the show had, I would still call it compelling, but I would call it clunky and not classic by any stretch of the imagination. So we can get into the details, but... Let's call a spade a spade. I think for Marvel going forward, they need to do better in finishing these seasons. And that doesn't mean finishing the show. You can have a cliffhanger. That's fine. But you need to execute better in tying together all of your setups. Yeah. It almost seemed like they just phoned this one in. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I was just thinking about how this episode could have been better. For me, the reveal of the suit and Falcon and his entry felt flat. Um, I wish they would have perhaps started off that episode with some sort of flashback to something. I don't know what, perhaps even Isaiah Bradley and really emphasizing what had been done to him and then sort of tying it together towards the end and how you know, Sam was able to make that happen. I called it, by the way. I called it. They were going to make that special room in the cut. In the yeah, museum. we're, we're going to pat each other on the back here a little bit. So save that a little bit. Save that okay. thought. Okay. So, yes. 
so that that you know that reveal fell flat um do you want to get into each scene or do you want to speak specifically to some of the things that you you didn't like and things that we liked. I mean, let, let's, I guess I don't need to go scene by scene on this one. I think now that we have the whole show, I think we can kind of look at the key elements and characters and tie it back. And if you don't mind, I, the place I actually want to start is related to the pandemic. So this, in both of these shows after the fact, or in this case, near the end of the show, it has come out some things that COVID may have done to these productions. So in the case of WandaVision, you know, you and I never really discussed this, but mm -hmm. there was another episode. Okay. That's something that came out after the fact. It was that the finale was actually originally two parts. And what we got had a lot to do with the deadlines they had to meet for the show relative to the delays they had in production due to the pandemic. So, I don't give them a free pass for the finale, but I thought it was interesting. The creator said, we literally just didn't get to finish and shoot everything we wanted to or mm -hmm. thought we were going to. In this show, it's a little different, it, it, but it does tie to the, what happened in the finale. It's come out that the original premise of this show centered on a global pandemic unleashed out of Asia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty obvious why that one went to the cutting room floor and they did a rewrite. All right, how could they have known? Yeah. Although, by the way, shouts to this show, which before 2020 had both social justice and a global pandemic in the original script. That is eerie, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. But what it did, I think, Pablo, in the finale is it made the Flag Smashers irrelevant because it really felt at the end, like the cause was no cause at all. And you can easily explain that if you tell me, well, they were really supposed to be the agents and architects of this global biological weapon, which we never got to see. Yeah. And you re all along this show, I felt like they've done a good job of humanizing the Flag Smashers, but it wasn't clear what their end game was. Yeah. And by the end of the show, it felt very weak. So my first thing was, the pandemic may have wreaked more havoc on this show than we anticipated. We knew about the delays in production, but at the end, you know, the villains needed more purpose. And that immediately kind of set up the finale and its set pieces to kind of fall flat, which they did. It brings me back to that conversation that you asked me, how did, what did you, what do I think about Carly specifically? And it, it it brings me to the feeling that I had again, uh, that I had for Carly and the Flag Smashers in general. They were, you know, they were a, a separate entity that were trying to um, keep what they had been going on, I guess, for the five years before the snap. Um, but what had been interesting to see was what they went through and how they lived and perhaps the immediate reaction of when everything came back, that probably would have been a, a, a bit of storytelling that would have been really tied things together, but they never did that. It was all, you know, I guess what they experienced and nothing that we got to see. So that I think was missing. Um, and yeah, you're right. They really felt like they're un unmemorable characters to this show. Um, the people surrounding that uh, plot, I guess, were were obviously the best parts. You know, Sam and and and, and Bucky and, and Zemo. Everything surrounding the Flag Smashers, outside of the Flag Smashers, was I think I liked the most. But um, yeah, they, they they definitely fell flat, and 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 just the way it went down. It was a forgettable moment. Yeah. It's something that we've seen before. And we didn't really get, we didn't really get anything epic from the Flag Smashers from a fighting standpoint either. There wasn't some brilliant tactical move. There wasn't some, you know, hand to hand that you're really going to walk forward and say, wow, that was a scene, kind of like the highway scene in Winter Soldier. There was nothing like that. Yeah. Um, but in 
Harley, the way they left the character, I just didn't buy it. Like she didn't do enough good in my mind to warrant the martyr portrayal, which she got at the end. Like that, that's more reserved for, you know, a villain who redeems themselves and kind of goes out a boss. And I don't yeah. think she really did that yeah. in this show. So it, that I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't jive with the portrayal at the end, even though I thought she was an interesting character set up along the way. Obviously that was different than the Carl Morgenthau of, of the comics. Now, what did you think of Sam, the totality of, of Sam slash Falcon slash Captain America in this episode? Uh, again, his reveal just didn't give me that impact that I was hoping for. Again, if we would have gotten some, I don't know. I don't know what it was missing, but it just didn't hit home. Um, I think the stuff that he was doing was dope. His speech at the end was a little, went on a little bit too long. A little too long. Yeah. It went on too long. Yes, it went on too long. At first, I thought he was it, it had stopped, and then he kept going. <laughs> so, yeah, they. I just again, I just think the way it was written, I think they 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 either did too much or too little with this episode. It felt too cookie cutter to me. So first off, let let's talk about the suit. I we we praised. Scarlet Witch for taking a difficult comic book suit and making it cool in a modern sense. Yeah. I think they missed with this suit. It looked kind of clunky, didn't it? Right? <laughs> right? It looked like somebody needed to iron it. I don't know, but it just looked a little bit too. Yeah, it's like a little American Gladiators or something. I don't know. It just didn't look vibranium and tight the way we've seen Wakandan technology yeah. all the way through these shows. It fell so right away, I was like, oh, no. Like, yeah. when he burst through, I'm like, oh, oh no. That's yeah. not what I was hoping for right Yeah, there. but they fell off on the suit. They fell off on the suit. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I, I felt like it looked clunky. Uh, and I just, I get, again, I didn't just, I didn't feel what I wanted to feel seeing him in that suit as Captain mm -hmm. America. So then... It felt to me like the, you know, we talked about this last week, that it's all set up for Sam to have this hero moment and he gets elevated and he becomes this inspirational figure. It just felt like they buttered it up too much. Like, it, I mean, the people that were cheering him at every turn in this battle, I'm like, why are you standing on the highway in the middle of bombs going off? I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's for like Spider-Man like, 3. Yeah. Like, what? what are you doing? <laughs> Exactly, you know, and then oh, the back fountain. No, yes. that's Captain America. Like, yeah, come on. It just felt very cliche, right? It was like very cliche to get him to that point, and it just <laughs> the show had been good about not doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I felt exactly the show was so good, it, and then to give us this, I don't know, man. It just feel like a, 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 a Jennifer Lawrence performance on behalf of the writers. You just phoned it in and cut the check type of situation. Even though it wasn't, but the parliament failed to really scrutinize and really think about this episode. Well, you hit on it, which is we talked about the greatness of the parliament, the idea of it. The question is, whose was this call? Who, whose call was this, right? Was this... Did the writers want to go a step farther? And the parliament said, no, we're not quite like they parliament gave them rope to really explore some issues and conversations in this show. And like at the end, did they feel like, hey, you got to bring this back to the Marvel Center we're used to? We'll never be. I never know that. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It just didn't feel like the tone was the same as the other five episodes. And, and that was a little bit disappointing. Um, you know, I'll. I'll give myself a little pat on the back before we give your big pat on the back. <laughs> I told you John Walker was going to do a face turn in this. Yeah, he yeah, absolutely yeah, did. Yeah. He yeah. absolutely did. But the, the weird thing was, it was kind of inexplicable. Like he was on a revenge mission, which made a lot of sense. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'll save this truck full of people. I'm like, you haven't done anything remotely close to that. And yeah. I've ever, so I don't know, like, what did you make of how 
And then we we wind up with speaking of costumes that actually I thought looked decent. Um, we get to the U.S. Asian costume, which I think looks pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um, but what did you make of his arc, kind of up and down in this episode? It felt a little different than what we had gotten up to this point. Yeah, I think in his mind he was trying to do the right thing, but yes, he was still out to get his guy or get who he needed to get or, or complete his mission. And he had that moment of, I guess, epiphany of what he needed to do and, and what he, who he needed to save or whatever the case may be. But I still think he got off too easily. There should have been repercussions. It shouldn't have been, I'm a good guy still, right? He yeah. should have, it should have been something else, but they made so, it too hokey, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, so so he pulls the truck back. They see him pull the truck back. And it's like, we're the heroic trio now. They go off, the three of them, like, I wouldn't want that guy on my six. Yeah, yeah, After yeah, what he's been yeah. doing, he's, he's, he's a loose cannon, right? And Bucky's like, yeah, he's watching him, but they're kind of like, he's kind of joking with him. He's like, Abe Lincoln, what do you, I, I just, it felt like very forced that the heroes would be like, all right, he's, he's back he's to cool. being yeah, one of us. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, nah, nah. After what you did with what, with, with the device that you did it with. Yes. It's unforgivable. I mean, if you go back to the previous episode, they were doing anything they could. They broke your arm. Exactly. <laughs> So for them to be chummy chummy afterwards and and still no repercussion towards him because they told him you cannot, you're not Captain America, you know what I'm saying? And he can, he yeah. comes back. And we all knew what that shield was gonna do. Absolutely nothing. So for me, it was like it was just it was just a waste of time to have him use that shield. I think somebody should have given him that shield. Perhaps um what's the what's the lady's name? Contessa. Yes. But yeah, I didn't like that scene either. And even at the end, when he becomes US agent, which okay, that's a good setup, like that. It was kind of weird. It almost felt like we were seeing it an outtake where at the end he's like, Yes, I'm back, I'm back. I'm like, what are you talking about? Just like a weird, yeah. like out of character yeah. moment where I was like, yeah. is he good now? Like what? So we know he's not totally good in the, in the comics when he's U.S. agent, but it's a strange. But he does spend time as being an Avenger too, so he is kind of play. He does play both sides. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. It, again, it just felt again like the character had been on this one path, and then we got a little different version of the character in the finale that just didn't didn't square up all that well. Um, but yeah. So, but did we, they give we, him the suit at the, at the same location where he was? Uh... Um, where they where they had that hearing? Yes, I assume that that I think that's what they were trying to tell you was that that room was unused, and yes, that's what they were doing. Yeah. They now the best that. part of the episode, for my money, you nailed episodes ago, which is the Isaiah Bradley. Piece. Oh yeah. This yeah, to yeah. me was the one part of this was the high point of the episode was him was both the as you said restoring Isaiah's hope, and then the tribute. And the way Carl Lumley kind of played it off Anthony Mackey, I really enjoyed this. This was my favorite part. I watched it several times since. Although I think it came a bit too easy. Because if you think about all the times that Isaiah Bradley had his conversations with Sam and Bucky and then with Sam, he was leaning one way. Right. There was no way... And because of the act that Sam did and he saw it on TV and the stuff that he said, I still think they needed another conversation where Sam needed to plead his case to him and still That's have a little bit of tension there and then take him to the museum. Right? So I think that's that moment came too easy, but it was an it was a it was a good scene nonetheless. I I really hope Carl Lumley is not done with this character. There is some real chemistry that, and obviously we know the Young Avengers setup is you know, looming there behind him, but I, I hope they leverage this into, you know, I think people have 
were speculating, there were some people speculating, would Steve Rogers make a, an appearance? And you and I both were like opposed to this, right? It's going to cheapen the show if you bring Chris Evans in as mm-hmm. an old Steve Rogers. This is the guy that should be filling that role. The, the sort of mentor, you know, between missions, voice of not just reason, but voice of sort of counterpoint to Anthony Mackey's idealism and patriotism. I hope if there are future seasons and shows that this character is continued in some form, because that, to your point, would allow him to then become still have that jaded DNA at points yeah. and be like, wait a minute. Yeah. You did the one thing. Yeah, you yeah. instilled some hope. I appreciate that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. look at all these other things as you go through mission by mission. So I'm really hoping that Carl Umbley is part of the future plans here. Cause I, I love, it was my favorite sort of cameo level or side, you know, lower level supporting character, like Zemo too much, I think to be in the same class, but favorite lower level supporting character in this by far and really hope he's back yeah backrack that's that's his name right backrack 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 what did you think of he went out he went out like like you know like he didn't he's dead right maybe (laughs) i'm not convinced he is Okay, maybe he's not. Maybe, but maybe he is. It, it seemed like he was. That he, you know, but I mean, they never. I, I don't think they even showed them carrying his body away or carrying no. him away or nothing. Um. So I, I think that that was a lame uh, uh, scene for him, and the reveal, which I still. I'm not convinced of her being the power broker. No, I'm not either. Um, you know what? I was sort of, and we'll get to this later, because I believe all this ties into this uh, series that they're they're working on. I was sort of thinking of Sharon Carter possibly being a scroll. Oh, I, I thought this, I had the same thought. So. It to me, this is connected to Nick Fury and Secret Invasion. That's who I think she's talking to on the phone at the end. It would make sense because the end of WandaVision effectively had this shout out to Nick Fury as well. So you have this parallel. Yeah. You're setting up Secret Invasion. So to your point, if it's the real Sharon Carter, she's operating outside the system with Nick Fury's knowledge and authorization and they're running their own game that would make a lot of sense to me or to your point she is a scroll and in fact is also connected to nick fury but is not actually playing herself yeah. in this particular show either of those work for me and i think make perfect sense to explain why she is both a little sinister but also still helpful when it counts to the heroes and we know i mean nick fury is not exactly a saint, right? He will cross lines and will kind of live in the gray area to be to get the job done. So, yeah. I don't know if you think it was Nick that she was talking to, but I'm, I have a. That's my betting money is that it would connect the two shows very nicely if he kind of is basically not seen, but inferred at the end of both. Yeah, that that is quite possible. I still, um, I still don't know. Oh, I still believe that that she is not the 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 power broker because she never said I am or no. they just they just based on what was being said to her and who was she never denied it or 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 claimed to be so it's gonna be interesting because again I I feel Captain America for secret invasion all this is tied together somehow. There's no way these things stand alone. No. And she, I mean, Carly, so she repped to Carly and Batrock that she was, if she, to them, she was the power broker or the representative of the power broker. But I think, yeah, we agree. There's someone else behind her. And we got that confirmation with the phone call at the end. There is someone else behind her. So yeah. uh, and to Batrock's thing, you know, again, a little disappointing. We didn't get a mega fight scene that I thought was super duper awesome. I actually thought the cap one was better. Oh, yeah. In Winter Soldier. And by the end of the show, it was evident that his 
main function was to move forward the Sharon Carter storyline, right? It, it, he was really in the show because of her pulling him from prison and sending him around and all that sort of stuff. So that, that we kind of found out he wasn't really uh, his own entity. He was just a pawn for that cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, again, overall, I think the show was great. Um, I, they, Marvel is just having a tough time landing this thing smoothly and gracefully. Um, again, my favorite characters were, I think the, if you ask me that question again about who's the MVP. Who's the MVP? I think Bucky, man. He had, well, we didn't talk about his moment. What did you think about his sort of cathartic moment with the father? Again, I called it. That's he, right. was the, he, he was, it went deeper than I thought it would go. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, it was with him it started. His uh, um, crossing off um, that, the, the people that he needed to talk to off that list. Um, and I think he's probably one of those of the one of the characters, especially him, him especially, that has that's in a good place right now. Um, his character, because um, he has um, Anthony Mackie, right? I mean, not Anthony Mackie. He has um, Falcon in, in, in the show, and. And he's, he's, even though Sam did some dope stuff, you know, with, 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 uh, Captain America, um, Isaiah Bradley, he did what I thought he, I thought he was going to do, but, uh, the Winter Soldier, uh, Sebastian did a, a good job in this story. His storyline, I think was the most, yeah. uh, how would I say? Complete? I could, yeah, complete. That's yeah. the word. I agree with you. It was an understated performance, but it had some of the most emotional moments that maybe didn't, they don't, on first viewing, it's not the first thing you think of, but then you kind of review the episode in your mind or you rewatch it and you're like, yeah. he's doing a lot here. He's doing a lot there. Yeah. And I agree with you. It's probably the most complete performance start to finish. I, I just, I think you're right. Sam was probably the betting odds favorite, but I, between the suit, the speech, some of the cliches that he was subject to, I just didn't, didn't think it. Like I just, he was better in some of the prior episodes than I think he was in the finale. And it, again, is, is that Anthony Mackie's fault? No, it's, he, you know, you get handed a script and you're told what to do. But, you know, the speech was just, we talked about the line and Marvel done a good job with that balance and that speech was over the line. It was just yeah, too much, yeah, yeah, too yeah, many yeah, yeah. of the same reinforcements. And it's like, you're in the middle of a battle scene and you're like, basically like, wait, let me grab my microphone, head to the podium and hit you with like, a, a, like, a, like an election, like a campaign speech. And I'm like, you know, a little much, you know, it's like, so I, well delivered, well acted, but just, they need to be edited down. So yeah, I'm with you. So I would probably say Sebastian Stan is your MVP. And then, man, best supporting character. You want Zemo or Isaiah Bradley? I feel like Isaiah Bradley might have stolen this at the at the. Every scene notes. that he was in, I, I was just unbelievable. Focused. Yeah, I was just focused on, and I mean, I hung on every word Zemo said too because he, yep. he's always saying something to mess with you, right? And not even to mess with you, but to bring some truth to the matter and his reasonings behind what he says. Um, yeah, Isaiah Bradley, uh, he, he was in every scene that he was in, he, his performance was, was, was captivating. Yeah. Um, damn, I, I kept on thinking about this episode and it's like how differently they could have done this it's like you finish this ordeal that you all these um politicians or whoever they are have gone through and they they're sticking around to hear sam make this speech or whatever i mean i just feel like a lot of this could have waited 
he he could have said something while I'm Captain America flew off whatever and then then give him the shield the way they gave this guy the shield have that celebration as him being Captain America I think that would have been better than the whole speech perhaps that speech would have been given differently but given later with a crowd instead of the the phone stuff again I don't know it's just it's a great point. You don't get that. You don't get the circular. You don't get to bring it full circle from his speech at the beginning, where he relinquishes the shield. You don't really get a government-sanctioned, you know, kind of vindication for him. It's basically he kind of did the same thing John Walker did. He just took up the mantle, seized it, and was like, "This is me." And then we're kind of led to assume it worked out because then they changed the title to Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. You're right. We don't actually see the the scene that basically formally makes him Captain America. Yeah. So maybe that's deliberate though. Maybe that's for the future project that we now know is in the works that maybe that's something that will be addressed. So let me ask you this. Does this final episode bring we got we got to look we got to take some time this week I don't know when to look at our ratings I don't know I had the same thought you want to do we yeah, you have this you go you you you're gonna say the same thing I've been thinking so to see where they fall because I think we had Falcon and the Winter Sol- Soldier pretty high I mean we still gotta let the other ones play out I think Loki is probably the the lowest uh, on on our list possibly um. Unless she hope, but it's not it's not in the top uh, of the list. But um, we have to revisit and sort of see where they land. I guess to me right now, I, th- I think I had one one division number one. And I think it's still number one. Falcon number one. Falcon Winter Soldier two. I had Falcon Winter Soldier four. I'm feeling better about that right now. <laughs> By the time we get to the end of it, yeah, it's gonna be I, for me, four. I'm not going to win the soldier. It's not going to keep that number. I missed on one division. I had that five, actually. No, sorry, I had that three. I had that three. You yeah, had a one. Right. I had a three. I think that's right. I I had the same thought process of did, which one did I ultimately like better. This one was more consistent. From episodes one through five, for sure. One division, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's easy for us to forget. It took three episodes to get really into get that into, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. But once it revealed all the stuff that that got revealed, you was like, "Yo, you pretty much forgot about it, but you understood why those three were there." But yeah, episodes I would say four through eight are really like really strong on that show. I, it's close. I mean, I think. Hmm, I would say this. I will be disappointed if either of these shows is one once we finish the rankings. I think Marvel can do better than oh, either yeah. of these. Good start, solid start. I think we can do better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's our take on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode six. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you think about uh, this episode and the overall series uh, for Marvel and Disney+. Plus. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Thank you